Hey, um, we're gonna, again, continue with a few tutorials here with Scratch. I'm gonna, at this point, I'm gonna just start you off on, on so we've started out the robot one, kind of started off with motion. And then um, the last tutorial was about um, shooting projectiles by creating clones. We did the snake one, which is a, just a slightly different type of motion. And today I'm going to um, kind of start you off on another one. So I don't want to, I guess, overwhelm you with too many projects. But um, each one is kind of like a, a little bit different in terms of the motion involved with the sprite. And it gives you ideas uh, when you start creating your own application, your own project. I'll call this uh, the tank tutorial. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to delete that sprite. I don't want that one. Um, I'll go to back uh, the stage. As a matter of, as a matter of fact, now the stage. Now that there's no sprites, you see the stage. The stage is active. I'm going to make it. Um, I'm just going to fill it in all one color here. Doesn't matter what color you pick. I'll do black. So I fill that in. I'll put black here. Great. So there's the stage. Now I want to add a sprite, but I want to paint the sprite. So there we have it. I'm going to draw in here. I'm going to actually use uh, white. Let's go to white. You have to kind of play around with these to get the color, the exact color you want. I'm going to draw like a little tank, which is just really more than anything a circle. So there's kind of like the circle. And then with a little like gun, which I'm just going to draw a rectangle to to symbolize that. That kind of sticks out like that. So that's the gun. Perfect. Now, actually, well, let's give this a try. We'll see right now in a minute if this works or not. Notice that it's pointing to the right. Uh, the reason this is important to have it point to the right is because your, by default, uh, the direction where you start pointing is to the right. It's 90 degrees. We've talked a little bit about that, but we'll see it in action right now in a minute. So I have it pointing to the right. Uh, right now that I'm here, I might as well just create a projectile. So let me go ahead and duplicate this. Uh, but I'm going to get rid of that, the circle. Can I not select it? Oh, that's because I need to press the arrow key here. So I'm going to delete that. I'm actually going to make the projectile just a tad bit smaller than the actual gun. There we go. And I'm going to fill it in another color, red. Good. So we have two costumes here. Uh, the first costume I'll put here tank. Second costume is uh, the projectile. I'll call it bullet and the sprite, the name of the sprite is just tank. There we go. I can go to the code here. Uh, the first thing that I want to do is I want to code the motion, but the motion here is going to be different than the other ones. Then for our, uh, for our other projects, I'll, I guess I'll start here. When the flag is clicked, um, I want to forever check. So forever check to see if I'm pressing on the arrow keys. So again, maybe you're starting to be more and more familiar with this on the right arrow. Now, if I click on the right arrow, what I want to do is I don't want to move to the right. Instead, if I go to motion, I want to turn the sprite and I'll do like five degrees at a time. So this should then now let me turn to the right. Notice it does. There we go. Good. I'll copy this because if I, I want to duplicate the if statement, put it underneath. And if I turn to the click on the left arrow, I can actually use this. I'll turn in the opposite direction here by five. So now I can turn, if I press left and right arrow, it turns in both directions. Uh, the the sprite looks a little too big right now for, just for me. So I'm going to actually do, well, first I'm going to do a go to zero, zero. So we can always restart. We can also point in a specific direction here, point 90 degrees. Let's try that. Good. And then I do want to, uh, under looks, I want to make it a little smaller set size to, I don't know, like 
maybe 80% of its original size. Okay, that's not bad, that's good. Now I also wanna, I wanna be able to move this, right? So if I press on the up arrow, I wanna move, which means I'll, I'll, I'll right click, duplicate the if statement. If I click on the up arrow, I don't wanna turn it, instead I wanna move 10 steps. Now, I guess I, I want to point something out here. When you move, you move in the direction that you're pointing. Change X by moves sideways. Change Y by moves up and down. Notice that it actually moved right now. But move 10 steps, that moves in the direction that you're pointing. So right here, that if I click it, it moves. Well, I, it's not, it's trying to click the whole thing. If I click it, it moves to the right because it's pointing to the right. And if you want a little better sense of that, if you check the direction of the current direction, notice how if you move your sprite, if you rotate it, that changes. If I click on the up arrow, oh, I need to put up arrow here. I did move 10 steps. Notice it moves in that direction. It moves in whatever direction I'm pointing. I also let it move backwards, which means that I'll just du duplicate this block. If I click on the down arrow, it will move negative five. You know what? That's my kid. Bear with me. Okay, down arrow now moves backwards. Let me restart this and then notice I can move. And I can actually move in circles. I can also move backwards. Size of this is still bothering me, so I'm actually going to shrink this to maybe 60%. Yeah, I think that's much better. Okay, good. So we we have a different type of motion that allows us to turn, not just move side to side up and down, which is convenient. This is supposed to be a tank. Well, there are tank games online, okay? You can actually look them up. So now, uh, let's once again code a little, um, a little bit of a projectile, um, a shooting action. Let me once again, I'll go to events. I don't want to, I don't want to write that code in here because this is the algorithm for motion. So I'll do a separate algorithm for um, shooting. This is actually something we've done before. We again have to use a forever block because we want to constantly check. We want to be checking forever to see if we've pressed on the space key. I'm going to use the space key or the space bar to shoot. And how are we going to shoot? We're going to create a clone of ourselves. So we're going to say, um, create a clone of myself. When I press on the space key, but um, if you recall, because this is um, processing at very, very high speeds. The computer makes these, um, checks these really quick. Even if you press the space key for less than a second, this will probably be triggered more than once. So after I'm gonna wait just for like two tenths of a second, 0 0.2 seconds before I even check again to see if the space key was pressed. So press the space key, phone, wait, and then check to see if you press the space key again. Now, um, this is actually very similar to our previous tutorial. When, um, not when I receive a message, when I start as a clone here at the end, I want to, um, I want to the, 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 the clone to change costumes because I want to use the bullet here. Switch costume to bullet. I think I might have to shrink, since I had to shrink the size of the tank, I'm guessing the bullet is gonna be a little too big, but we'll just try it. Then I'm gonna to go to repeat until, where is that, right here. So until we meet a criteria, we wanna repeat the motion, which is in this case, because the bullet is gonna be, is a clone, the bullet is a clone of the tank, the bullet 
will point in the exact same direction that the tank is pointing. So I just need to move two, 10 steps, forever move 10 steps in the direction, in this direction, which is the tank direction. And finally, I do want to sense whether the bullet has touched the edge of the of the screen here so repeat until touching edge and then after that i want to get rid of the clone i don't want the clone to stick around so i'm going to delete this clone so now if i press the space bar there's the clone actually it doesn't look all that big i think I think that's a good size. Actually, I'll probably make it just a tad bit smaller. Under looks, we want to set size to I don't know, like 80%. That makes the bullet just a little smaller than, than the drawing I've made. It looks almost, it looks bigger, right? Let me just try something like 60. Yeah, much smaller. Notice now we're shooting here bullets off. Go backwards. Now notice we have algorithms, like two separate algorithms. We have an algorithm that takes care of the motion. We have another algorithm that is split into two blocks, sort of speak, that takes care of shooting projectiles. So again, just one more uh, type of motion here. One more thing that you can do. I'll uncheck the direction. That was just for you to see that the direction of the sprite changes as you're turning. So that's gone. And that's, that's the end of it. Uh, the next thing would be to put enemies in here. So have some enemies come from, from everywhere and anywhere. Um, for that, we'd probably add a separate sprite. You can maybe lock one up, uh, just a quick enemy, or you can make one, you can draw one. We could have maybe, let's see here, something like, let's put insects. I see a bug there, but. You could have probably a combination of these, right? So ladybug one, ladybug two. Notice this one, um, this one has multiple costumes. This doesn't. Ladybug two is probably a good one. We could have ladybugs coming from all over the place. So in here, we'd write the code for the motion of the ladybug. I'll actually spend the next tutorial video um, coding that in here.